In this video you will learn all angulating features that you need to know. It is already May 2024 and Angular 18 RC was released, so now it is time to talk about its features. As of now there are three main features inside and two of them are really small, let's have a look. Here is a blog post about these features, we are getting route redirects with functions, which actually means you can write not just redirect to a string, but also return here a function with some logic. Additionally to that there is a new redirect command, you can use new class, new redirect in order to make redirect. And now it is possible to provide some default content inside ng-content. These are super small features and I don't really see any point to talk about it. But the main feature of Angular 18 is zoneless application. This is why I really want to focus on this specific feature. And if you don't know how Angular and change detection is working, it uses the additional library which is called zone.js and it was there in Angular starting from Angular 2. And up until now Angular used this library. So we don't have any problem inside Angular when we have a synchronous update, like you are changing a local property and this is something like component.currentPage equals something, after this line if Angular calls change detection it would be totally fine. But it doesn't work like this when we have asynchronous code. Because the stack works differently for asynchronous code and it is not really possible to execute some code of Angular later after our asynchronous code is done. This is what zone.js did, it monkey patched the behavior of the browser. And this is essentially the only framework that did something like this. Up until now we used this approach, but now we are getting a feature which is called zone-less, which actually means we won't use zone.js anymore. And the main question which you for sure have, ok, now we need to refactor everything in signals, it won't work without signals, because we don't have zone.js anymore. And this was my first thought, but essentially this is not true. Let's have a look on the project. As you can see inside package.json, I generated an Angular 18 application with next zero. The first change that we must do, we must jump inside Angular.json. Here are our polyfills and as you can see there is a library zone.js. We want to remove it, we don't need it anymore. Now we can jump inside our app config and here is how our providers are looking like. So here we have provide zone change detection with parameter event coalition true. Previously we didn't have such provider at all, because it was not needed. The main idea now we can configure if we need a provider for zone change detection or zoneless change detection. So basically this means that your whole application will work just like before with using ngzone. Now instead of this line we can write here provide experimental zoneless change detection and we don't need to provide anything here. The main idea is that with such provider we won't have a provider of zone.js inside Angular at all. So with this configuration zone.js is fully removed from our application. Now let's have a look on the component. And in order to test all functionality I created here a child component. And even without digging deep inside Angular to understand how change detection is working now without zone.js we can check what features are working. This is why here what I did, I created several variables. I have a local property, a signal, an interval with RxJS and an event property. So let's have a look what is working here. First of all I want to comment out this set timeout and just write here this current page plus equal 1. As you can see in browser current page 1. This happens because this is a synchronous update, it will work even in zoneless application. But things are getting more tricky when we have a set timeout, because set timeout brings here a synchronous code. If I comment here everything, just write set timeout with current page plus one and render it inside the template, as you can see in browser it will not be updated. Which actually means with this case it works like with zone push. We need to manually trigger change detection because there is no automatic change detection like it was previously in the Angular. And in order to do that we can use either mark for check or detect changes. As you can see now in browser we are getting current page 1 because this mark for check mark this component that it needs a change detection cycle and this property was updated. 
So this essentially means if you want to use zoneless application, your application must be refactored to on push. Because if it's not, then probably in your application, in a lot of places, you must write manual change detection, because Angular won't trig it by itself. So even if you don't plan to upgrade to Angular 18 right now, it makes a lot of sense to leverage and push and refactor your whole application to it, then it will be easier to make great later. Now let's check signals. Here I created a current page signal, which is one, and now let's render it here. And in order to change it, I can uncomment here the set timeout with one second and set here a signal too. Let's have a look in browser, we're getting signal too, which means signals are working with zone less out of the box. After this, let's check in the sync pipe. So here is a current page dollar with the interval and we're updating it every single second and we're rendering it here. As you can see in browser, a sync pipe renders new value every second and we don't have any problems with the update, which actually means RxJS also works just fine. And now here is the last part is event change, which actually means here we have a property after event and after click we are setting this property to 999. As you can see I am reloading the page, I am clicking on the button and this text changed here, which actually means there are four different cases when change detection is triggering now. First of all it is setting an output in your component, secondly an event change, third is a signal update and the sync pipe through a RxJS stream, which actually means everything that we used previously we can still use inside zoneless. The only problem is that Angular won't trigger automatic updates like before. And you must understand that zoneless doesn't really bring us any new performance. Yes, the bundle size is smaller because we're not using zone chess, but the main idea is the same. We make a change inside component and we notify Angular that we must run a change detection cycle and it starts from top to bottom and it checks which component it needs to re-render. So on push is still a valid approach and RxJS local properties and events are still working. But signals is still a superior approach here. But if you want to improve performance of your application, it makes a lot of sense to look on signals. And if you still don't know how signals are working and how you can switch from a RxJS stream to signals, make sure to check this video also.